Hello and welcome back to Vlogmas. I'll turn a light on. What shall we do today? I don't know. I'll just get the screen recorder up. I had two ideas of what we could do today. One was look up famous Christmas plays and just see what happens. Another thing was to go back to what I looked at in the first video and look up famous Christmas pieces of music. We kind of glossed over Bach's Christmas Oratorio at the first day, so maybe we could revisit that. Acting, or music, what will do? I'm just gonna Google Christmas plays. Famous Christmas plays. We might not come up with anything, that's the thing. 10 classic and contemporary holiday plays and musicals. Okay. Backstage.com. We can trust Backstage.com. They're quite a reputable source of information for actors generally. Right, so let's have a look what we have. A Christmas Carol. It's been made into a Christmas show. Charles Dickens' 1843 classic may be the mother lord of all Christmas shows, in part because it's so open to reimagination. Oh, so there's, there's lots of different adaptations of this play. And it's often presented annually at schools, community theatres and esteemed regional houses across the country. Which country? Less traditional versions include a, a Klingon Christmas Carol. It's exactly what it sounds like. Is that Star Trek? Oh, I'm glad to check this now. <laughs> Scrooge has no honour, nor any courage. Can three ghosts help him to become the true warrior he ought to be in time to save Tiny Tim from a horrible fate? Performed in the original Klingon with English sub super titles and narrative analysis from the Vulcan Institute of Cultural Anthropology. That's interesting. We get a Christmas Carol or Oi Hanukkah Merry Kwanzaa performed by the Czechoslovak American Marionette Theatre at La Mama in New York. Okay, so that's a, a Christmas Carol. I know a Christmas Carol from Charles Dickens' is A Christmas Carol. Uh, the next Christmas piece is Dr. Seuss, How the Grinch Stole Christmas the Musical. So we have a musical now. Dare I look it up? This beloved children's book was first brought to life by Minneapolis's Children's Theatre Company in 1994, where it's still playing apparently, and the musical has been delighting audiences across the country ever since. We have the Chanukka Guest. This is Eric A. Kimmel's classic holiday story about an old woman, Lapkiss, and a friendly bear. Miracle on 34th Street, I've heard of this. This is a 1947 Christmas film, and it's been adapted many times over the stage and screen. It's a Wonderful Life. We had a look at that the other day. It's a Wonderful Life. It's performed as an energetic radio play. Oh, I like radio plays. And we have Dee Snider's Rock and Roll Christmas Tale. Let's look at Theatre Mania. 12 plays and musicals of Christmas. Apparently these 12 shows are guaranteed to make your holidays happy. Okay, we have something called Home for the Holidays. That's the only show on Broadway this year. What year is this then? 2017. We have a Middle Eastern Christmas from the Mediterranean to the Americas. Whose holiday? What I've noticed about all these plays is they seem to be very big and garish and very family oriented. Not subtle at all. And here we have Alaska for heaven's sake. Alaska is back for her fifth annual holiday cabaret at the Laura Beach and Theatre. Fans of RuPaul's Drag Race will notice the title of this year's show is inspired by the emoji insult that internet trolls lobbed at Alaska. Oh for heaven's snakes. Ah, fair enough. Get ready for a very snaky Christmas. Ah, well this does look fun, but again, it's not... Well, it's not Becca, is it? This is what I mean. <laughs> The Dead, 1904. This looks like it might be interesting. Oh, back for the second year in a row at the American Irish Historical Society, this immersive take on the James Joyce short story treats audiences to a full Christmas dinner in a Fifth Avenue townhouse. <gasps> Guests mingle with Gabriel Conroy and his extended family as they celebrate the epiphany in 1904 with a night of song, dance and barely suppressed family drama. For those not lucky enough to experience their own quietly sad Irish Christmas, this is the next best thing. Let's have a look at that in more detail. The Dead, 1904. I guess it's an immersive theatre thing. Audience members themselves attend the Mrs. Morkan's holiday party and they move from room to room with the actors, listen to the music, watch the dances, dine on a meal inspired by the menu in the book and observe the characters in their interactions. The production takes place in a in an authentic Victorian mansion, perfectly evoking the atmosphere of the story, and at each performance, premium ticket holders are seated with the actors and experience the famous dinner scene from within. Oh, that would make me really nervous. <laughs> I would feel so awkward. Let's look this up even more. This sounds quite intriguing. The Dead 
Theatre played. Let's look at this, the Irish Repertory Theatre. Let's see what they say about it. It describes a holiday gathering on January the 6th, 1904, the Feast of the Epiphany, in the Dublin home of two elderly sisters, Kate and Julia Morrican, and their niece, Mary Jane. At the party are students, friends, and a celebrated tenor, a lost alcoholic, and the couple, Gabriel and Greta Conroy. Over the course of the evening, there are conversations, music, dancing, and dining. There are speeches and disagreements, polite and impolite, and when it is all over, Gabriel learns something about his wife that changes his sense of who she is and who they are to each other, of what it actually means to be alive and to be dead. This is what it says here. This exquisite recreation of James Joyce's haunting story was the most sought after theatrical event of New York's 2016 and 2017 holiday seasons. Mm, we've got a thing here, a video. Let's watch this. party and it's the feast of the epiphany the actors and the audience were all at the same party okay so that's that let's have a look at the story james joyce the dead short story by james joyce wikipedia the dead is the final short story in the 1914 collection dubliners by james joyce it is by far the longest story in the collection and at 15,952 words is almost long enough to be described as a novella. The story deals with themes of love and loss as well as raising questions about the nature of the Irish identity. Apparently it is described by T.S. Eliot as one of the greatest short stories ever written. So, characters. Here we have the list of characters. The plot summary. Do you want me to spoil it for you? Probably not. A critique and analysis. So T.S. Eliot loved it. The essence of the piece is uh, maybe this. This story offers a critique of a society that has been gripped by a deadening paralysis of the spirit while also offering a juxtaposed memento mori vision of the enlivening effect that may be found when the living contemplate the lives of those who have died. Ah, I see. And let's have a look at memento mori. A memento mori is an artistic or symbolic trope acting as a reminder of the inevitability of death. Oh, apparently, apparently this is what's referenced into this story is referenced in the Father Ted episode, Grant Unto Him Eternal Rest, when Ted quotes from the end of the story on the night before Father Jack's funeral as it begins to snow. That's interesting. On the central plain, on the treeless hills, falling softly upon the graveyards, upon the crosses and the headstones, upon all the living and the dead. It's also been adapted into a Broadway musical. I'll leave that here. This has been a very short sort of overview of, I don't know, Christmas plays that exist. To me, they tend to all be quite flamboyant and big and more about having like a big family fun thing event, which makes sense, I guess. It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? Nothing too deep on the theme of Christmas, although the dead does sound quite interesting. And there's a performance of it that's quite immersive and a means of making it into a Christmas holiday event for all the family. <laughs> also, we had a brief look at some other plays that exist and I focused on the dead because that's what I'm like. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow when we will talk about... Uh, I'll have a look at some Christmas music. I'll have a look at that. I was watching today. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>